Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over futures. Now, futures took me a little while to understand what the heck it actually was because I misunderstood. Originally, I thought a future was basically um, doing multiple things at the same exact time. Um, the terms for those is parallel programming, where you can get while one thing is waiting, you can accomplish something else, and you have three things going on in the program at different times. Um, uh, let me put it the simple way, an example. Just say, for example, you have, um, you want to have three kids, okay? You can do it one of two ways, right? You could get pregnant all at once, and then at nine months you have three children, or you could get pregnant once, have a child, and then, then we have get pregnant again, have a child, a child, and that'll take um, nine times, nine months times three is 27 months. It'll take at least, at least, okay? least, I'm not talking biology here, just example, 27 months to have three children, right? So now, again, this is a silly example. You can't have three children at the same exact time, assuming different mothers and all that junk. But it's just the concept of parallel programming. That's what I thought a future was. It's not. Okay, so if that was not an issue for you, forget what I just said right there. What a future basically is, um, the, um, it, it basically is a type so it's kind of like int and string it's a type that is wrap that has a different type of value that is not quite there yet let me put an example for example let's just say i made a cake okay and the method for the cake because we've used this before is is tasty okay so i'm calling the is tasty method and that's going to be a bool okay so cake dot is tasty so I get my cake, I throw it in the oven, leave because I have an emergency to do, and then I email my friend and I said, uh, cake is tasty, and sends me an email back immediately saying null. And okay, well that doesn't quite answer the question, right? No, where is it? Does it, right? So what happens is that at the time it's still in the oven, so he can't actually check if the cake is tasty or not, right? So what in because he took it very literally, like responded right immediately. The answer was no, because there was no value to this is tasty method, right? But what you really wanted, you wanted to wait until the cake is made, then taste it, then return the value, right? Because between the time that the cake is made, the, the, val the object is made, or it's, at least it's completed, and this method is being called, there is a latency. Okay, and that latency, a latency basically is the time, the time that takes between doing something, wanting to do something, and actually having it done. For example, like, just say, for example, you had a remote control for your television, right? You hit a remote control button, you expect the television to respond immediately. But what if you hit the remote control button, the off button, and it waited 10 seconds before the TV actually turns off? Right, so that would be the 10 second latency. Now, in that example, when you think about it, you're pushing the button and it's not doing anything, you push it 15 more times, then 10 seconds later, it turns off and on constantly. You know, I think we've been there for computer programs. That's what the latency actually is. So in that 10 second time period, you can't do anything really that is predictable. So in the time that it makes to take, make a cake, if there is a latency in between there, you don't want to do those methods, call those methods immediately. You want to wait until this is done and then do that, right? So that's the concept of a future. Don't do something immediately. You will return something, the future, but you'll wait until something happens before you do something, all right? Maybe it'll be a little bit... Let's, let's make an example here, okay? So I, I made... We've done this before in a previous video, dart.io. Okay, so I have this file.txt. So it is main.dart, file.txt. Notice it's in the original folder level. It's in a different location. Not right there next to it, right in the starter section here. I hope that makes sense. And what I will say is file, um, let's just call it a file, equals new file. And the path will be um, file.txt. I could have done xxx.txt. It would be in a high there, okay? 
let's get back here. Okay, so this will be this will take the value. This is the object created for file.txt. So what is that? So what if I want to get file? Um, let's see. Var um, file co contents equals file dot read as string here. Okay, so the variable file contents is going to be the file read as string. But notice, notice what happens right here. Read at when I put read as string, it's a future. Okay, it returns a future. So the string, the type is the future. So it returns a future, but the future type is a string. So the best analogy I can make for something like that, it's kind of like a list, right? So with a list, it'll look like this, but it's basically a type wrapped in, in this case, integers integers in the list, right? That's the same thing. The future is basically it ha it wraps around or it contains a different type of type within a type, just like a list is, okay? So this type would not be var, it would be future, right? So the, this type is future. It returns this right here. Okay, so let's just say print file contents. All right, and let's just see what happens. Okay, instance of future. See, so what it's actually doing is this is not the contents itself. Why? Because you can't just automatically print a future out. You have to print, a, 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 treat a future like a future. Now, what happens if this text file was huge and it took a couple of minutes to return, right? Dart is going to start going from the top to the bottom and just go one after the other. Run this, run this, run this as fast as you possibly can. If there is no value here, it's going to be a null. But because it's a future itself, it'll just return instance of future. It doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot. So how do you actually utilize this? Well, if, if you think about it, you have to automatically tell the system, wait for this results to come back. So it's kind of like a fail safe, okay? Because you could always just say, well, wait a minute. Why don't I just go ahead? Why doesn't the computer just read what's in there? If it's null, it's null. If it's not, it's not. Well, that leads to the unpredictability, right? That's the part of the program, which is good, that you don't want unpredictability. In one circumstance, if the file is huge, it may read the value of the contents. In another circumstance, it might read null. Now, that's not what you want. You want it to read the same thing every single time, either the context the contents, excuse me, or nothing. And in this case, it'll be pretty much nothing. It'll just be an instance of a future, which is, for practical purposes, nothing, right? Predictability, and that's the importance. So how you would do this is you would say something like file, and I think we've done this before again, dot then, okay, so wait until you get the results of this. If this takes one millisecond, if this takes 10 years, wait until you get the context then do something with this. And just the syntax of something like this will be string, because it's going to be read as string, and contents, and then I'm going to have it um, just automatically return like print contents. Let's just do that, okay? And I think we have done this, and it prints the contents out. I think we did this before, but we didn't explain it specifically in this type of fashion. So that's the simple concept of the future. It's if you have something that you know that it may take a little time to load, it's not going to run, it's not going to run one right after the other, you may have to use a future. But you can't just create a future, okay? So you can't just say, okay, there is a little bit of latency here, therefore I'm going to automatically create a future. It has to have characteristics of being a future before you can make it a future. That might not be completely clear, but with experience, you'll kind of realize that some things are futures, like file contents, and some are not. Again, even if it's a super simple thing that doesn't take any time to load, it's still a future because it has characteristics of being a future. And how we treat it again is we get the future type, and then, then, keyword, we do stuff with it. All right? Play around with something like this. 
and see what we could do. What else could you do for something like this? When complete. So, so this is going to happen. A lot of this stuff is going to happen in the future. When, no pun intended. What other things can you use the future for? Um, you can use the future for anything with latency. So, for example, if in the future we're going to use like streams and sockets, it's if you're trying to access some information out there that it may take time for it to come back. So like on the internet, you click on a, a site on the internet, you wait, 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 it loads down and it comes in. Things like that will be very helpful for the future because again, we don't, when we're waiting for the information to download, we don't want to just go ahead and just get download nonsense. We want to wait for it to download and then we act upon it and that'll be very helpful. Okay. So this is not the end of the futures. We'll go the, over this more in the future, but that's the basics of it at this point in time. Thanks.